in the backyard and he fell the back people to us. So he was and uh, so it, it was great pleasure that we once again uh, have this collaboration on this anniversary. And, and uh, um, we just want to say a couple of things about the center. We've, uh, and because of the need for events like this and for a space where our cultures can be showcased and ideas, progressive ideas can flourish, that we felt that we need to move into a bigger space and, 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 and have that opportunity for the continue uh, the kind of uh, discussion and, and, and uh, demonstration of our culture that is needed in this community. So um, uh, we were able to arrange so that um, we now have a non-profit cultural center, which we call the different Brooklyn's Cultural Center, the People's Residence. And we call it the People's Residence because we do not feel that this place beyond belongs to us alone. We can't support it alone. We can't pay for it alone, and we can't, sur we can't survive in it alone. So that's why we say it's a people versus because together we can build this space. We, it's, it's a venture where we want you to join with us in, and have that vision of a permanent space for our culture and for progressive ideas. Become members and all of the opportunities you have to be a participant is available on our website at www.adbcc.org and so you can get uh, information about how you can uh, participate. But it's, it belongs to all of us and we all, that's all to do. Because it's a dead that represents a lot for people of African descent all over the world but also for progressive people who are interested in looking at the experiences that were going on in Burkina Faso between 1984 and 1987. The title of the event is called 30 Years After Sankara, Which Way Forward for Africa and the Caribbean, which evolved around the popular uprising that took place in Burkina Faso in 2015 and that removed the former dictatorship of Blaise Compaoré, who is the assassin of Thomas Sankara. Sankara came to power in Burkina Faso in 1984. Burkina Faso being a small landlocked country in West Africa. He was part of the military, but through a long period of time, I worked very closely with the civil society organization that were engaged in political movement. So we have this situation in Burkina Faso where you have the army that was very closely linked to trade unions and political parties. Most of them that were at the time considered as Marxist Leninist parties. And that connection created the culture for a lot of young people within the army to be politicized and develop their political consciousness, which later on erupted into this uh, revolution that took place between 1984 and 1987. Now, this year is very important because it's happening in the context where we celebrate the 100th year of the Russian Revolution. We are not going to go into that in detail because everybody can have their own judgment of what happened to the process, how it was attempted to be applied in different parts of the world, but we can all agree that it was a major event in world history. So today, in 2017, that we are celebrating this commemoration is happening within the context of our 100th anniversary. It's happening also in the context of the 50th anniversary of the assassination of Che Guevara. And Thomas Anker was always presented by a lot of people, even though I don't like that much, a lot of comparison, but as the Che Guevara of Africa, or Che Woodman, the Thomas Agaro of Latin America. Che had very deep connection with Africa, in the sense that I have a book here that you can show in the middle, which is the, the Che in the Congo, in the middle. 
It means that uh, he was very, at one point, he was in Congo and trying to organize and help people in the Congo launch some national process movement after the assassination of Patrice Lumumba. That process was not very successful, and it's after that process that he came and then went on later on to Bolivia where he was murdered 50 years ago. And that before that also he had some connection with people in the national liberation movement of the former Portuguese colonies in Cabo Verde and Guinea Bissau, movement that was led at the time by American Cabral. So all these events are happening, are happening. And then I would like to, us to start with the starting point to break away from the myth that Africa, nothing is happening there. That's negative images. Because that's what we see in the media. When we don't follow very closely the movement that's happening inside Africa, we tend to see sometimes that we believe that, oh, how come these conditions are so rough in the the continent? You have civil wars, of course, sometimes you have people trying to reach into Europe through Libya and Italy to try to migrate. And if those images are the only ones that are transmitted through the mass media, people easily can fall into some type of pessimism and believing that nothing critical or important is happening inside the continent, which is not the case. A few years ago, a process of revolt started in Tunisia with a young man who set himself on fire to protest because he was just a young, educated Tunisian with a master degree in his pocket and he couldn't find a job. He was trying to go from market to market to sell products in order to feed his family. And because he was being harassed by the police, he set himself up on fire and that's when the whole process of what is called the Arab Spring started and then went all the way to Egypt and Bahrain, stuck in Bahrain with, uh, with some substitution and I would like to go inside them very much. But in Africa itself, in 2011 and 2014, there were two important events that happened. The 2015 event is a young generation of Africans from Burkina Faso who 27 years after the assassination of Thomas Sankara decided to remove the dictatorship that was in place and that was led by the president, Blaise Compaoré, he was, who was the main element in the murder of Sankara. When this process happened, most of these people who were engaged in this struggle, they were not born when Sankara was in power. In 2011 also, a process in Senegal took place, even though the process was just to challenge the president at the time, not to go into, into a, an attempt to have a third term in office. It started a kind of popular revolt that stopped that process. Now that itself are just two examples of what's happening. And I would like to share with you two images of one or two minutes, not long, longer than that, to show what's those events were, and you will see the similarities when we watch the movie in Burkina Faso. The most recent process of mass mobilization that's happening in Africa right now is happening against what is called the CFA currency. Most of the French colonial countries, as former colonies, are sharing right now the same currency called CFA, Colony Francaise d'Afrique, as Negroes were called before. After independence, they changed the name and called it Community Francais d'Afrique. But the currency, the money is still the same. It's been controlled by France, it's been printed by France, and at the, at the, at, at the bank, at the, at the federal bank, France still have veto power in that, in that institution in order to make sure that the interests of France have a guarantee. So, the recent wave of protests across West Africa is happening around the struggle to dismantle the CFA front in order to push forward for a common currency within all the West African region. I don't want to go too long because uh, we have a moment to, to watch, but I would want to like just to finish by showing you just those images so that you can keep in mind when you watch the movie on Burkina Faso to see the events that took place in Burkina Faso in, uh, in, in Senegal in 2011, the current mobilization process that took, that's taking place against the, the 
CFA, and this event took place just last month in Paris, and you will see the mass mobilization of young generation of Africans who are trying to challenge the status quo, and that will be enough to convince us that history is always going to move, even though sometimes we have the impression that things are stuck. I am very proud to be at this event and to meet you and to see this film on how St. Hera lives on in Burkina Faso today. Uh, 30 years ago, I was working with a socialist uh, uh, publishing house called Pathfinder in New York, and I was part of the team that initially translated St. Hera's speeches and writings into English and got them put together in a book. Uh, eventually, I returned to Toronto, but the team at Pathfinder continued their work and have now put out a second edition uh, what's called Sankara Speaks, and the Pathfinder uh, friends were very gracious to bring them down to the books, uh, to the bookshelf here tonight, so they're available for sale. And there's also a little uh, biography of uh, Sankara by Bernice Parish. I just want to tell you, this is a fantastic book, and you should try and get a hold of it somehow. Of course, two copies are here. Uh, there's another little book that uh, is available and um, this can be gotten through the library, I believe. And I just want to say that I was uh, deeply inspired uh, by reading uh, Thomas Sankara's words, and uh, particularly uh, his writings on women. He speaks of women's suffering with unique empathy and insight, he describes the brutal conditions of which everyone was aware of, that is, the brutal conditions under which they lived and probably still live today. And um, the, of course, no one spoke of those brutal conditions, but he wrote about them. And uh, he, he calls on the men as part of the revolution to change their conduct and uh, towards the women. And he appeals to the women to spearhead the social liberation of everyone. And St. Kara's message of liberation is needed here in Canada just as much as in Africa. Thank you for allowing me to say a few words to you. Sisters and brothers, comrades, please convey the greetings of socialist action, the Fondation Socialiste, to the October 14th gathering in Toronto to celebrate the life of Thomas Sankara on the weekend of his brutal assassination 30 years ago. Widely regarded as Africa's Che Guevara, Sankara was a great opponent of imperialism and a remarkable fighter for the independence of his land, renamed Burkina Faso after became its president. Under his leadership, distribution of land to impoverished peasants, nationalization of sectors of the economy, renunciation of usurious debts to wealthy foreigners and institutions like the IMF, amazing efforts to ensure the provision of water, food to the majority, literacy, women's rights, and much more show the way forward for human emancipation across Africa and globally. The experience of the Sankara-led revolution demonstrates that solidarity with freedom struggles is essential, but only a socialist revolution that knows no boundaries is the path to genuine democracy, economic development and harmony with nature, and liberation from all kinds of oppression. That is what Thomas Sankara envisioned. It is why we denounce all who were complicit in his assassination and why we celebrate his life. Revolutionary greetings, Barry Weisleder, Federal Secretary, Social Section, Youth Reflexion Societies. But that shouldn't stop us to continue to seek the process for a trial. Because we know that Blaise uh, Comfort, of course, in power, who is now living in neighboring country, in Ivory Coast, was an element of a coup that was larger than him. We suspect that French was at the heart of this overthrow uh, of the government of Burkina Faso. We made a lot of requests to the National Assembly of France to have access to the file of the government, and we will always be rejected. And then we believe that if we had access to those files, 
we will have a clear picture of what happened around the assassination. But today, that process continues. We have a collective of 18 lawyers, including some here in Canada, in France, and in Burkina Faso, who are leading the case, and we hope that within one year we're going to have a beginning of a trial with the presence or the absence of police power in the country. The second aspect of this struggle was a political struggle. Because 27 years, 30 years after, we have made some gains. And those gains is that today, the memory of Roma Sandra is still alive. And that was one of our objectives initially when we launched this campaign against impunity in Africa to try to bring those responsible in justice. It was to make sure that the experience and the, the, the legacy of Thomas Sankara will live on and that will continue to inspire people in Africa, in the Caribbean, and across the world as a model of integrity, as a model of change, as a model of progressive change, more important. 